Intro the splooge. Hey, folks, how are Hey, you know what? We don't have chat up on my monitor, Justin. I just realized I can't say hi to folks, and I can't see them saying hi to me. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have a crisis. <laughs> it's Drama Tuesday here at uh, Reaper Toolbox Live Pro Tips. Yay! Okay, so if you're out there, now I can see you, so please say hello and let me know that you are here because today we're going to paint some yellow, or we're going to at least talk a lot about yellow and why it's so difficult and the things that you can do with it and the things that you need to keep in mind when you're highlighting and shading it. So we are, up, oh, up. Oh, Justin is still I, uh, tuning my chat. How about that? He's tuning go. my chat. All right, I'm, I'm apparently good to go. Hey, Twisted Noma, hey, Future Rebel. I like to actually say hi to people. Hi, Quindy. Yes, yellow, my favorite color, believe it or not. I need, I need to paint more of it. I have this reputation for doing a lot of purple and gold because I love those too. But, well, gold is yellow, so I get it, I get it sideways, right? <laughs> Reaper overlords, is that what we are, Sib? <laughs> I don't really want to be an overlord. Hello, everyone. There we go. We got the Justin voice in. Scientologist, hello. Brazelton, Achilles, good morning. Good morning, Corsair. Blame Collins? I thought Blame Ron was the Reaper uh, credo. I guess it could, it could have evolved in the uh, almost 17 years that I've been working here. Comrade Corey, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, planner. <laughs> I like that you're Mr. Sexy Voice, Justin. Uh, yes, yes. Candlelight yellow is one of the colors I'm going to be talking about. I actually base, uh, much like skin tones, I actually usually start dark and work light with yellow, but you can do it the other way around, too. My boyfriend is a huge fan of uh, candlelight yellow, though, Quindy, also. Hello, Melite. Morning, morning, morning. Is everybody, uh, I still think you need, we need to pick a children's book for Justin to narrate, and then we need to, like, you know, or, or a number of them, then we need to have a poll and vote for the most popular one. My vote is still Goodnight Moon. I still uh, I still like the idea of doing uh, the Go to Sleep book by yeah. Samuel. Yeah, yeah, well, that's yeah. yeah, that's another yeah, good bedtime. Oh, it's it's yes. great. The Go it, the heck to sleep. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Although I don't know if uh, if Reaper would endorse you reading that. Oh, You'd no, have that, to do it on your stream. Absolutely. And yes, I, and I that would, would actually that. be a really good. I would go to your stream just to listen to that. Everybody <laughs> poops is also a great one. I would have to overproduce it like crazy. <laughs> like I would have to overproduce it to the degree that people are like, "Wow, this is crazy for just a uh, children's book." Yes. Or a pseudo. Well, you book. can talk to Daryl about that because he's in the voice acting and he knows about like mics and and the audiobook stuff. So, so that yes. The one the votes was that one, was it, Planer? All right, well then, yeah, then I guess that's it. Uh, a Light in the Attic is really good, too. That's a great one, Future Rubble. I haven't read it in a long time. I, maybe I should go back and read it. Wow, I haven't, I don't think I've, I've read that book, not read that, had that book read to me in quite a long time. I like, let's make, yeah, yeah, there we go, bingo card. Yes, yeah, sorry. I'll, I'll drop my uh, ubiquitous boyfriend out of the chat then. That way, that way I foil your bingo card, Reaper John. Except that you know he's awesome, so I mention him a lot. All right, HP Lovecraft for bedtime. No, I'm going to vote that down, Corsair. I'm going to vote that down. <laughs> All right, should we yellow? Should we yellow? I'm thinking we should yellow. Also, I'm going to get the command updated here as we start because I'll then start picking out the paints you're using and I'll start putting them in here Okay. so they can see. So I'll follow behind you. Okay. Right. That sounds lovely. Lovely. All right. All right. We got, yeah. man, we got so many colors, guys. We got so many colors. So we got base coat on here. Um, and I was, uh, everybody talks about your boyfriend constantly. Who's your boyfriend, Quincy? Oh, it's, it's bug lips. oh is it bug lips? Yes. Oh, awesome. I didn't know Quindy was also a goblin, or is it a cross goblin and et cetera, like, you know, relationship? It is. It is. Oh, okay. okay. Absolutely. I don't know how Quindy identifies, so. And actually, when you get the two of them in chat, it, it's fairly entertaining. <laughs> it should be. The best couples are like that. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, yeah, Bug can be on the card. That's right. We need, okay, we need all the boyfriends on the card. We need, that's it. We need a boyfriend card. And then, you know, whenever anybody mentions their boyfriend, somebody can fill in a square. <laughs> Or girlfriends, you know, we could also, you know, do the girlfriend thing. Um, uh, but I don't know, guys don't talk about their girlfriends like, like women talk about their boyfriends. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's just a, like a, you know, 
<laughs> He's funnier than you are. Aw. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we got some yellowish colors here going on, guys. So I want to talk a bit about yellow. So yellow, okay. First of all, I'll tell you what, chat, I'm going to pull you right now. What is hard about yellow for you? What exactly makes yellow such a pain in the tuchus? Tell me. Tell me. I know many of you are on my Patreon as well. I know you also, a bunch of you said that yellow was your hardest colors. Tell me why. Why is yellow hard? And I will address it right here, right now. Is it because of the coverage? Ah, Justin has a good one. Coverage, yeah, there's Comrade Core. Coverage, coverage, coverage. So much coverage. Making highlights and shadows. To, okay, so contrast. Translucence, yep, it's coverage. It's all the coverage. I have such an easy fix for you guys. You're going to love me after this. It's so easy. Mm, having it show up as yellow without being too gaudy or, yeah, or bright or a translucent. It often looks flat. That's a highlight and shadows uh, thingy. I'm going to grab my, my sticky notes and just start writing some stuff down. Yeah, I like doing this. I like having the interactive chat. So, okay, so coverage is first, followed by contrast, flatness. Too bright is another one, because you want it to not overwhelm everything else you do. Yo, Lilandi, we are uh, currently talking to the nerds to ask them why yellow is so challenging for them. And then we're going to actually, oh, gifting. Thanks for the sub planer. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Thanks, so I, I, I know a lot of people avoid yellow in the first place. It's not like it's one of those colors that, that some people love and some people hate. And a lot of people are just ambivalent and don't bother to reach for unless they're using them to highlight other things. <laughs> you, oh, we already love you and thank you, Coos. Um, yeah, so, oh, you got your yellow triad yesterday. Well, very good, great a table. Awesome, fantastic. So the real key to getting coverage for your yellow is actually starting dark and working up from there. So instead of working up, uh, let's get my palette, it's a little bit overexposed, but we'll deal with it. Once it, get paint, it gets paint in, it'll be better. So once you, uh, if you start dark and then work up, you can use higher coverage colors for your base. And technically I can even still go down a step from like here. So uh, let's look at what I'm doing here. Oh, and there's my Patreon. Thank you, Mubot. Um, for before we I guess before we jump in, I should say that hey, I, I actually took uh, some of the suggestions from my Patreon for today's uh, today's show. So uh, you know, if you feel like going over and checking out what we do over there, uh, it is Patreon.com/slash/PaintingBig. Moonbot just gave it. Oh, and I brought extra stickers, Justin. We don't have a giveaway, but maybe we'll have a giveaway on Thursday. So I brought my regular stickers and I brought my. Super shiny stickers. I like the shiny stickers. I know you do. I think the white ones look snazzastic too, though. No, they do. I just like yes. shiny. I did remember to bring some back. So maybe on Wednesday we'll have some, we'll throw some painting big stickers into the giveaways. All right. So let's talk about that. what you shade yellow with, first of all. And usually with yellow, people reach for the orange, but then it goes too bright, as somebody uh, noted up there, is uh, that it can be way too, way too bright and candy-like and it doesn't go with stuff. So usually when you're looking for darker shades of yellow, I mean, you might start with lantern, but lantern can also be a shadow. I will usually go in the direction of orangey browns. Um, orangey browns are not gonna give you as unnatural of a shadow as pure oranges. You can go a number of ways with them. And you can also mix some great ones from reddish browns. Cause if you think about it, Red plus yellow equals orange, so reddish brown plus yellow equals orangey brown. Um, yeah, I haven't tried this one yet, I might though. Asmodeus Red is one of my new favorite colors ever from the Pathfinder line. Um, so I might use that today. Uh, you could probably mix some redstone shadow. You could definitely use tarnished copper actually, because that's an orangey one. Let's get these guys down so you guys can see all these different colors that you can construct or use directly. If you're, if you're working, looking at the colors on the right here, they're definitely ones you would mix into your yellow. Um, we'll be done on one of the three morning streams on an... Oh, okay, yeah, you're talking about your 1,000 member thing. How many members do we are we down right now playing around the Discord? I think she said we were at 9.45. Oh, wow, so we only need another 55 people to get on the Discord, and then we can start a couple giveaways for the morning show. Great. So, yeah, so these are a good range of things. And actually, Palomino Gold is what I often use for a base coat. Um, this is one layer of it over the bones, and you can see that it's pretty solid. Like, yeah, I could put at, uh, another coat on there, um, but uh, the other thing that, that uh, Palomino goes well with is if you mix these two, 
Lantern Yellow, which is a very orangey yellow, which actually does have uh, decent coverage, and Palomino. Then you get the yellow on the front here, which, as you see, also takes coverage from the fact that there's Palomino in it, and it's brighter than the one on the back. So, see, a little bit less saturated, a little bit more saturated. So, depending on how you want to start, depending on if you want a more natural, um, buttery yellow, or if you want, you know, a brighter yellow, you could start with those accordingly. Um, I'm actually going to mix some of that up because I want to put a second coat on. Just a thin coat. At this point, the coverage is, d is decent enough that I don't really only need a, just a thin coat to touch up to get a really, really solid uh, base. So let actually, let's do, let's do some mixes here. Five. Let's do some mixes with Lantern Yellow and with Palomino Gold. And I almost always will start with these. The other color is very useful for those of you who have HD colors still. Um, you could look at, oop, I gotta shake up my lantern better. Uh, you could look at Mustard Yellow. Uh, I think it's 29807. Mustard Yellow from HD, if you have the HDs, was essentially a mix of ochre and yellows. So various yellow pigments. So it also was a fantastic base coat for yellow because it had high coverage, a lot of pigment, uh, and good coverage pigments in it so that it was a very, very good one. So we've done two separate. And you can see how different they are when you put them in the tray. Um, the ochre is definitely a bit more muted. It's a little mustardy. Uh, and then the lantern yellow is here. But, I mean, even if you add just a tiny dot, you can warm up that, that uh, ochre a lot and make it a nice base for yellow. Now, if you want to start even darker and you want to work all the way up, yeah, mustard yellow, yeah, 29807. I thought I remembered. Thanks, Quindy. Um, let's look at orange brown. This is usually what I would use to shade yellows, and either yellow, either from that or from that. And you can use it straight if you want, or you can just do a mix. So let's do... What are those uh, two paints on the end there? The, the Asmodeus and... Oh, Asmodeus and Redstone Shadow. Yeah, those are... I'll show how those can be mixed in. Now the thing is, when you're mixing a shadow for your yellow, or using a color as a shadow for your yellow, guys, um, Gotta shake this up a little better. There we go. Um, you really don't want to use something with a lot of black in it. You really, really don't. Because if you do, we'll show you what happens later when I use black and brown, it will go green. It will go green so fast your head will spin. Um, because black plus yellow make green. They make a very pretty olive color, actually. So you'll get something like olive drab. And sometimes, uh, I mean, if it fits the character, if you're doing like a jungly type character, um, that green shadow on the yellow can work, but usually you don't want it on an orangey yellow like this. If you're going to go with a green shadow, I'd probably pick something even lighter and mix that green shadow, like NMM Gold Highlight or Clear Yellow. These are greenish, a little bit greenish yellow. This is definitely a green phase yellow, and this has a little bit, is more greenish and less orange than these other guys. So you want to kind of pick things uh, accordingly. Let's try this. So let's grab our ochre, and it's mixed with just two drops of orange brown. It's about five drops of ochre. Um, and that is just a shade darker than our original ochre. But notice it's also intensified a bit. I did add one drop of uh, the lantern in there too. So we've got an eight drop mix. And I haven't thinned it. Okay, I've thinned it maybe with one drop of uh, water just to make it a little more fluid. There we go. So that's a nice, rich yellow to start with. And you can see that over the top of the first coat, it covers absolutely. It's very solid. Um, neon safety yellow green. Undercoat white is the only way to do it. If you really need it to be bright, Corsair, you've got to start white. Uh, so whatever, if you're on Bones Black or any Bones that is other than pure white, and even then I probably would do a base coat of pure white first. You may also want to do, like, add a little bit of your yellow-green into the white for your first couple coats, and then when you put on a coat of the yellow-green, it should really go bright. And the only thing, if you're going bright, if you're going saturated, the only thing that you can shade with is really other saturated, saturated colors. If you do anything else, it's going to look wrong. Um, so I would use clear green, a little tiny bit of clear green mixed in to... Uh, and as far as what to start with, moth green works, so does uh, dungeon slime. Well, dungeon slime probably for a bit of a highlight. Um, or uh, moth green plus uh, neon yellow. yellow. Neon yellow is also a uh, greenish yellow, as is canary from uh, Bones. But if you're going to go that bright, remember every other color on the model has to be a neutral or a bright color. 
Um, so remember that you can't use any really muted colors uh, next to those bright colors, unless your neon safety yellow green is very small. If you keep it very small on the model, if it's just little accents, then you can do what you like. But otherwise, if it's a significant portion of the model, muted colors are going to absolutely hate it. Um, sometimes you can play off that, but that's your basic rule to not get yourself into color trouble. Um, otherwise, you, uh, if you, especially if you're a newer painter, you're liable to get yourself into color trouble. Um, yeah, moth green is great. Uh, black and armor, the yellow is the face and ears. Yeah, you should be fine then. Black and armor, are, black is black, it's a neutral, and armor is silver or it's a neutral. If it's gold, then you might have a little bit of issues. Uh-huh, I know. Well, you can blame Pathfinder on that, actually, Planner, because, you know, three of the prettiest pinks we have ever made are in the Pathfinder line. And they came up with those colors, not me. I've actually started painting more pink lately. Um, if you guys see, did Ron put up uh, the little mage that I painted recently, Justin? Do you know if uh... she's up, the, the little African adventurer mage? Let me check. Because she's got pink on her as an accent, and it turned out really well. She's otherwise blue and purple. But yeah, so, okay, two coats, and it is, like, solid. Solid. Um, so, yellow ochre, and if you want it to be, or sorry, Palomino gold equals our yellow ochre. And if you want it to be brighter, add in a little lantern yellow. Add in a little bit of candlelight. You know, here, I wanted to darken it, because I'm going to bring it up. So I added in two drops of orange brown. So this is, one. once again, it's going to be five drops of Palomino, a drop of lantern to make it a little more bright, and two drops of orange brown to slide it down the scale so that it essentially is our shadow color. And if we want to add more orange brown in the future to uh, really you know, hit those creases and darken them down, now when we do that, it's great because we've already got a little bit of orange brown in our base coat, which means that this orange brown, if I thin it down and use it for shadow, is going to work with this color really well because it's got a little bit of it in there. That is your key to making any color work as a highlighter shadow with any other color. So let us see. Now how to highlight this though? You're like, oh my gosh, how do I highlight this, Anne? It's got ochre in it, and it's like not a normal yellow. What do we do? Well, actually, you can highlight this sort of yellow with any other yellow. It really doesn't matter. Um, let's, uh, let's grab candlelight. Candlelight's probably going to work on this just fine. Hey, you've got orange brown now. Good. Orange brown is very useful, actually. So is chestnut gold. I can show you guys some mixes with this. We may do yellow tomorrow again, too, and do some more interesting things. I'm not sure. Depends on how much I get uh, covering. Type one if you love Anne. I, I, I accept the exclamation point. The exclamation point is an acceptable one. <laughs> Thank you. One, two, three, four, five. So why does yellow give us such conniptions? Well, yellow pigments are among the pigments with the finest pigment grinds available. And I'm going to talk a bit about pigment grind because I'm going to geek out. And you all can just deal with me geeking out about paint chemistry now, or pigment chemistry as the case may be. Um, so, what is pigment grind and why does it matter? You hear, or at least, you know, eh, 10, 10 years ago, you heard everybody going on about pigment grind, and oh, if your paint is gritty, it's because it doesn't have a fine pigment grind, which is BS. Um, if your paint is gritty, it's probably got a matting additive in it that is too coarse, and so you're seeing it. Um, all pigments are ground below the level of one micron in particle size, and that is essentially one micron is the size you can actually see. So you cannot actually see any modern day pigments as far as like you cannot see the particles. You just can't. Human eye cannot see them. It's just invisible. However, the pigment grind is still important. Why? Because the size of the pigment particle is going to influence its coverage. Very, very simply, a larger pigment particle will block the light, i.e. have better coverage than a finer pigment particle. So the reason that uh, yellows are so annoying to do initial coverage on is that if you are dealing with a pigment that is at all pure yellow, um, you are dealing with like a 0.1 or 0.2 pigment grind instead of a 0.9 micron pigment grind. Just to give you an idea, 0.9 is titanium white. It's why it has great coverage. Uh, 0.1 and 0.2 are like green shade yellow. Technically, orange shade yellow is a little bit like a 0.3, 0.4. It's got a bit better pigment coverage, but still not ideal. The ochres, on the other hand, the oxides, like Palomino Gold, our friend here, 
those are like a 0.7. So that's why if you mix this color into your yellows to get a base coat, it will help you exponentially. Um, and why, why don't they just make a yellow with a better pigment grind, you ask? Well, okay, well, we've all seen that sometimes chemists accidentally make new types of uh, pigments, right? As they're heating some substance or playing with some substance or combining it, they'll get something new. But all of those are also going to have an optimal pigment grind. And what pigment grind does is very interesting. So when people started to utilize um, synthetic pigments and even natural pigments back in the day, they would, uh, when they got new technology in for finer grinding, they would grind and grind and grind the pigment to see where, like what happened, right? And there's two different types of grinding even. They can grind it very slowly or they can grind it very quickly and you get different color results depending on what you do, and most pigments need both. And the fascinating thing, uh, metallic pigments are not pigments, Chris Air. Metallic pigments are flakes. They're actually larger than one micron, and they are usually fragments of mica um, or another natural substance that uh, reflects the light. So metallic pigments are, uh, metallics are not pigments, they are flakes. Uh, pigments, uh, they give shine rather than color. Sometimes they're coated with something that makes them appear a different color but they're still not actual pigments. Hey, Troll Lord Games. Wow, you just missed all my like paint chemistry rant. So for those of you who, uh, who are watching Troll Lord Games and uh, wonder what my paint chemistry rant was just about, you could go back and watch the VOD after our stream. Um, but anyway, so the reason that they grind different pigments to different levels is there is actually a point in grinding process, and it's different for every pigment, where the pigment is brightest, most saturated. Like apparently you can grind naphthol red pigment, which if you're a painter and you ever use tube paint, you're familiar with naphthol red. It's one of the core reds uh, usually in a painter's uh, lineup. Naphthol red apparently needs to be ground to, for like six and a half hours in order. And then it, it's like, it's like nothing. It's like you can grind it slow, you can grind it fast. And then suddenly at like the six hour mark, it explodes into brightness. Like, and every pigment does that differently. So the finer pigment grinds are the pigments that you need to grind longer to get to optimum color. Whereas white, you get it as bright as it can get, really short time. So it's coarser, right? It doesn't, you don't need to grind it for a long time and make it really fine. Yeah, so there you go. There's, there's some awesome, you know, paint chemistry that Anne looked up about pigment grinds. But it means this is why, unless they discover a new substance that is very yellow, and they're working on it. There are organic uh, pigments now that are high solids, and it's part of what we used in our HD line and later in our bones line, that are higher coverage than the usual yellow. But they're still not, they don't hold, like, hold a candle to, to really high. It's like they increased it by a couple of, of tenths of a percent. Um, so they're working on it, right? They're working on it. But you just can't get coverage on a yellow because you're limited by the technology. You have to find an entirely new compound for yellow in order to maybe find one that, that gives you a coarser pigment grind and still is bright. So yeah, so there, there really is a case of you can't have your cake and eat it too. And it's the same thing with getting a paint that, uh, that is, you know, makes a good glazing paint and that also has high coverage. Um, the, you know, there's the, the plasticky paints that, uh, that when you thin them, they fall out of solution. You can't get everything. You cannot make the perfect paint right now. I'm sure they're working on compounds to do it, but you are limited by the actual uh, physical constraints of what you're dealing with. So, now you know. There is really nothing we can do about yellow except work with it. Um, so, let's, let's do some highlights. Let's see if this is dark enough. I think I'm still going to need more 201 for a shadow. But let's play with it. Uh, let's grab our uh, candlelight yellow. Oh, and uh, the annoying thing about yellow is you always think it's actually always also stronger than you think it is. Like, I find that when I thin yellow, I have to thin it a surprising amount to get it transparent. Let me see. This is okay. So let us put, and unfortunately, too, when you're working up from a darker base coat, and this is why I haven't gone darker than this, by the way, um, when you're working up from a darker base coat, yellow's lack of coverage can really get under your skin. Um, yeah, oh, good. I'm glad you read the Paint Secrets PDF on my Patreon, Jay. It is, uh, I think it's one of my favorite things I've done. I need to probably do a follow-up. But, uh, all right, so we're going to try just doing the yellow over the orangey uh, under our mix. And yeah, so candlelight yellow actually has decent coverage, but it's not covering so great over this. It's not giving me, like I can see a highlight, right? There you go. 
but it's not like really a dramatic highlight. I guess if I'm layering, that's not a bad deal. So I can do my first highlight with just candlelight yellow and I'm thinning it. I'm not thinning it very much. I'd say uh, this is about a two to one, I wanna guess. About two drops of paint per one drop of water. You need to thin it a bit or it will streak on you. But you can't thin it too much or it won't cover enough to give you a solid highlight. So let me set this up. And I'm covering a lot of area, but I am leaving my shadow color down in the folds. So let's do that. We'll do these two folds here. Candlelight yellow is also pretty bright. So this is going to result in a brighter white unless we tone it down a little bit. Um, and that, that's probably a job for glazing, but we could also do that by just adding a little bit of white to our candlelight. But I'm going to do that next, is essentially show you guys how it will be different if we underpaint with a bit of white. Okay, so it's there, but it's not like shockingly amazing, um, like it doesn't stand out huge. Hi, Maharoon. Good morning. Hey, everybody. And Zambies. Yes, and Corsair, who was already here. Yeah, uh, I'm going to do some underpainting now. Show you guys how it's different if you lay down a white undercoat under your yellow. Whenever you have a color that doesn't cover, as I was discussing with uh, Coops and Neon Green earlier, um, you can get best results if you're looking for brightness by using a bit of white to under underpaint. I'm going to go, that's about four, two, that's about two to one. If I add in all this, yeah, this white, I'm going to go down to one to one. Yep. There, one to one on the white. Lovely. And we're going to undercoat a bit, underpaint a bit with our pure white. So let's do this particular fold. First, we'll do a layer, a quick layer. You won't even have to be a great layer of pure white. And then we'll go over it with our yellow. And it's a uh, testimony to our white that. Uh, I can thin it this much. It's one to one paint to water and it still has coverage. Like I could actually add more water to make it more subtle. Uh, our white gets to the point where I have to thin it two to one water to paint to get it to uh, be perfectly like layerable, which is crazy. Um, this is also an example of why the Reaper base is awesome because it holds the paint in solution even at this level. Part of that is the additives that we add. But if you try to use um, some other paints that may be heavier in body, you're going to notice that they fall out of solution when you thin your paint this, uh, this much. Um, I specifically looked for a, a paint base that would not do that when I first formulated Master Series because I know you need to thin your paint to layer. I know you need to thin your paint to glaze. And the most annoying thing in the world is with you, when you're trying to work with layering or glazing and your dang paint keeps falling out of solution so you constantly have to stir it. Oh my gosh, it's so annoying. Um, so. You want your paint to stay stable for a long time. So, all right, so this is just pure white. But now, hello, Paul John's life. I'm going to grab my candlelight yellow and put it over this white that I just did. And that is going to give us a lot better or more, you know, strong results straight out the gate because the yellow is somewhat transparent. So what we're doing here is we're working with the, what you would normally think of as the weakness in the paint, right? It's transparent, it doesn't have coverage, but it is not necessarily a weakness if you learn to play around it. So playing around it means undercoating with a bit of white and look at how much stronger that is. You can see that it's much lighter and brighter. It stands out better. It's definitely a peg lighter than it is over here. And all I didn't even have to do, oh yeah, oh cool, thanks. Thanks Paul John's life. Thank you for signing up. Um, there we go. So there, so, and all I had to do was a really messy white undercoat and it looks like it's blended. Like the yellow over the top, not only does it, uh, you know, bring the right color of highlight that we wanted, but the yellow over the top also acts as a glaze. So essentially it hides the brush strokes, most of them. There's a little bit back here. Oh, I didn't actually paint yellow over them, that's why. But it helps to hide the brush strokes from the white. So you don't even have to be particularly good with your white. There we go. So yeah, I could blend that in a little better. Yeah, I talk about underpainting a lot, Trashorama, actually. Um, it's one of my key techniques, I would say. Next to layering and glazing, it is, uh, I think, 
I love to do textures with it that way. Um, Multi-layered textures are possible and uh, look great. So yeah, so you can see how this one is a little bit brighter and a little bit tighter than these guys who are having trouble coming up. Now, what we can do also is of course do a mix or I can just go up with, I can go up with some clear yellow next maybe. Now clear yellow is a bit of a greenish yellow. So technically if I really want it to go well with this orangey friend, um, I would mix it probably 50-50 with, uh, with the lantern. Uh, there are two, there are actually three yellow pigments and we're using all of them today. The first one is the yellow ochre or oxide. Uh, the second is the orange phase yellow, which is lantern yellow more or less, and also candlelight yellow, as you can see, is very orangey. It has a lot of that orange phase yellow in it. And then when you get to clear yellow, that's my green phase yellow. So I probably will do a mix of both of these. Let's go scoop. So you see how much, you know, how, see how green is, even though the camera's blowing it out a bit, you can see that's definitely more green than that is. So if I take a drop of that, and a drop of that, and I mix them together, yeah, a tiny touch of white. That's a good highlight color. And you don't really need to worry otherwise with what you're highlighting, what color, what yellow with. Like if you're using orangey yellows, it's best to stick to them. But if you are just using a lighter yellow and you're not sure of the pigments, like if you're just using, say, uh, 9303 NMM Gold Highlight, which I love, um, just mix a little bit of your previous color in. It's going to make it go fine. Don't worry about it. One of these days, maybe I'll do, I was playing around with her skin tones actually, and I was thinking I would do a little video on her skin tones. Her skin tones are actually blue liner. You can see the blue down here. Um, and then I brought them up with like mixtures of like uh, Amadeus Red, Redstone, and, uh, and then a bit of uh, orange. I think I was mixing in actually chestnut gold, but I was looking for kind of a weird, I wanted a dark skin tone, but one that was still fiery. So, um, all, all whites are titanium whites in the pigment coffee nerdery beer. Uh, we all use titanium white, um, but our white is technically called pure white. Uh, when I use white on this show, you can assume it is always 9039. The reason is this is our highest pigmentation white that we sell. All right. So let's go back on the back. Use our newly mixed up color. Now remember, you do actually need to add more. I added white to this, so I do need to add more water to it to get it to look good. We will get back to you eventually, in true Reaper fashion. Sometimes eventually is shorter and sometimes it's longer. Depends. Depends on what's on fire. So putting a highlight layer on there. So yeah, what's, what's going to be funny though is that one highlight layer on here is probably going to bring it up to the level that it was already at here. And it's going to be more work because I have to worry about um, my brush strokes because I'm layering now given I can glaze and, you know, futz with it. But as far as uh, getting faster results, uh, underpainting with white is your fast, your fast solution. So as you can see, even though I used a greener yellow, the highlights here are not bad at all. And since I used a bit of white, if I bring it down a little bit toward the shadow, this helps keep it from getting too bright. When you find that you have a really bright yellow and you want it to look um, a little less saturated, adding white is a good solution. It'll still be saturated enough to work with the first layers that you put down but it will take it down a peg as far as brightness. It will go light instead of bright. There are two different factors there actually, and I just put out a PDF um, on saturation. But uh, so saturated equals bright or intense and, and light is, is lighter toward white. So they're two very different terms actually. You can have a saturated color that is also light, but you can also have a super saturated color that is very dark like clear blue. Uh, so they are two different terms. A lot of people get light and bright mixed up. That is uh, the fault of the English language. I'm going to blame the English language and let that sit there. Figure I've been using it long enough, I can absolutely blame the English language. It's kind of like Ron has worked at Reaper long enough. We can absolutely blame Ron. Or what were, who were we blaming? They were trying to blame Collins earlier. I don't know if I buy that. For one thing, Collins is pretty hyper competent. I don't know if I would get away with blaming Collins. He's probably more competent than me. Doo -doo -doo. All right, so the camera is like, hey, Justin, can we adjust the camera a little bit and see if we can get this to show up a little bit better? 
Sure. Ron is always blamed. That's because Ron looks looks so apologetic when he's blamed, even if it's not his fault. Unlike other people who will just try to bluster their way through it. Like me. Well, not really. So let's see if we can get, yeah, a little bit. There we go. Now it, there you go. There, there, there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I think so. Yeah, that looks a lot more. It's still a little bright on the highlights. Or light. Sorry, it's a little light on the highlights. Ah, ah. Down, 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 down. All right, there we go. That looks, it's a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Now people can see a little bit better. Okay. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Ron looks so guilty all the time. For good cause, Twisted Oma, for good cause. No, no, no. Ron is so nice, he's almost Canadian. I think that's why he looks faintly apologetic all the time. I wonder if he had Canadian ancestors. For all you Canadians, know that I love you. I have many, many Canadian friends for this reason. Is Rhonda in the chat? Because I totally just got brownie points with her, if she was. But I didn't see her in. I did not see Bird with a Brush in the chat today. Uh, all right, so yeah. So now, as I'm working with this highlight, but I put a couple of layers on, right, to get ahead of this. Still, we'll do this. And I'm going to knock this down, actually. Gonna gonna grab some deeper shadows to make everything stand out because right now things are standing out, but they could be better. So I'm gonna reintroduce my orange brown as a shadow. It can be hard with yellow to get it to contrast, and that is because it's a light color. You just don't have a lot of places to go, unlike with a medium color where you can go all the way down, all the way up, like red. Reds are great that way. You can highlight them almost to, or shade them, shade them almost to black and then highlight the heck out of them almost to white and they look fantastic when you do that but white is harder but as you can see we are making progress we are able to see this now though i need a darker shadow so oh good yay liners yeah blue liner especially maharun um ed didn't tell me it was his birthday he always forgets my birthday so i forgot his birthday i i take consider this tit for tat he also forgets my anniversary, even though I remind him. <laughs> my Reaper anniversary, I mean. But he can't be uh, blamed for that because, you know, a lot of us had Reaper anniversaries. So if he had tried to memorize everybody's, it would be difficult. Although mine is actually the best anniversary ever. So there is no excuse for forgetting that my anniversary is April 1st. It's like the anniversary where you show up for your first day on the job and you wonder if they're going to say, oh, we were just kidding. Four drops of orange brown and taking a look at time okay we're good on time actually excellent excellent so let's add a little bit of a darker shadow we've got our orange brown here I think I'm gonna thin it about oh let's see here let's try two to one plus some water this is about three to one actually or sorry one to one almost all right da, 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 da. Mm, yeah that's probably 1.5 to one Paint to water. We'll pop that in there. Um, yeah, sepia liner would work just fine, Corsair. Um, you just thin it down. It's a great color for them, actually. If you notice that it's a little bit clashy, then just mix a little bit of your darkest yellow into your sepia liner. The liners are compatible with the paint with other paints fully. So, do 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 do. <laughs> Thank you, Hajizu. I think that April Fool's Day is the best anniversary ever, also. But everybody forgets. That's all right. I mean, it's only been 17 years this April 1st, you know. It's not like I've, you know, been here forever or anything. Totally guilting Ed right now, and he isn't even watching. There we go. And if I feel like I'm having trouble blending it in, I can always reach back up to my base coat color. Remember, that's right up here. Or even this color right here, which actually was my over base coat. Over base coat, like Overlord. Um, boop, boop. And has a bit, of, remember our base coat did have a little bit of orange brown actually in it, so it's going to work just fine on this model. Just hit your darkest points. If you want to, um, and I will often do this, I, if, I, if I do decide my base coat isn't dark enough, I will shade right after I base coat and then bring my highlights up. The thing that can happen though when you do that is that if you don't watch it, you can lose some of your mid tone. So that's why often I'll start mid tone you know, do a couple highlights, then push my shadows down. Just kind of uh, keep an eye on things and, and change it as it goes. Um, 
do 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 just adding in some little shadows along these little creases she has a lot of little tiny creases in her uh, cloth and there would technically be shadows underneath those so I'm kind of keeping an eye on them to darken them down just a little bit now this orange shadow is still pretty vibrant so it is going to give you a fairly vibrant yellow when all is said and done uh, if you want to really take it down then you need to start mixing some browns into your orange brown even or uh, or even into this but I'll, I'll mix them in orange brown since I did some orange brown here already let me grab some of this I'm just trying to do a little bit wet blend here to take this a little more orange also remember your surface control so if you remember and Ann calls surface control um, by, by surface control when I talk about it I mean the amount of surface that your that is the color you want the model to look so if I want this cloth to look yellow I need to make sure that over 50% of every fold is yellow so far it is looking yellow but as I added more orange in here it started to get dangerous like you can see this fold is like almost 50% orange now and these are fighting like is this orange or is this yellow so you can't quite tell when you look at it from this angle so when you're trying to shade your yellow make sure that a lot of the area stays yellow and if you lose your yellow go grab some and reapply it so that you can uh, make the fold swing back toward yellow the eye is going to look for the majority color so don't let your shadows overwhelm things letting your highlights overwhelm things just mean that the folds look like they are actually a lighter yellow than you perhaps wanted so it's a balancing act this didn't get quite enough base coat there there we go there and now that fold looks yellow again see because I took down that orange, I put a streak of yellow down the middle of it, I interrupted it, and now it's more yellow. Still looks like an orangey yellow, but that's kind of where we were going, so we're okay with that. On an F3D, that's the most uh, suitable yellow anyway. Justin, is your chat intruding on my screen? Did I see that? Uh, for just a second, yes. Oh, okay, microsecond. Microsecond of chat intrusion. So we got two ways that we can pick up or, or um, drop down this stuff. We can add a darker shadow, and we can add a lighter highlight. And we're going to do both. We're going to try to do it fairly quickly. I think I'm going to use, if I look at these, I think maybe Tarnished Copper, which is another NMM color that has many, many uses. 9305 is going to be my choice today. Boop. Stay. Thank you for the sub, cheese bagger. Oh, yay! Cheese bagger. A sub during Ann's show is a vote for Ann's show. Yay! I'm glad you like my show. Enough to sub it. Or if you don't, <laughs> and that was an accidental sub, um, I'm thankful anyway. <laughs> All right, so this is quite a bit darker, as you can see, the tarnished copper. And it has more red in it. It also has a bit more brown in it. Got a bit of brown oxide. Needed to be a good, like, base kind of tarnished, tarnished copper. Um, tarnishes uh, toward brown. It goes very orangey and brownish. So these are pretty different. So I'm going to want to thin the shadow color a little bit more. Remember, the more different your colors are, the more you need to thin them. The closer together they are, the more you can get away with thicker paint. Which is why I could get away with thicker paint down here, because these colors are very similar. I didn't have to thin it as much. All right, and then we're going to just hit the very deep shadows with this tarnished copper. Let's get this color actually on the plate here. So what we are using... Doo -doo -doo, I'm just going to line them all up. Line them all up. Boom! We'll evict those for now. Maybe we'll do greenish yellow tomorrow. Yeah, I'll do some crazy stuff. There we go. And let me get the Palomino here. There we go. Remember, Palomino is a key element. Unless you have mustard yellow from HD, then use mustard. But Palomino plus lantern or Palomino plus candlelight, both can make really good bases for your yellow. Um, lantern is perhaps a little bit better because it is darker. All right, so let's add in some of this tarnish. You can see how thin it is. It's because it's falling off the edge of my palette up here. You can see how it's really just a wash. What did Justin just do? The TV went white. Okay. Yes. I like to see myself paint. All right, so only in the deepest folds and the darkest crevices. So I'll probably want to put some of this in this little notch here and this little notch there. And I want to put some here at the bottom. And I want to put some here at the bottom. 
The other effect that this will have utilizing this color is that it is going to take it less vibrant again because although it is a pretty intense color, it still is brown, it's not orange. So when I bring it in and utilize it, it's very thin actually. I can almost glaze with this. And I'm going to actually hit this fold up here because it gets pretty narrow. So, you know, as we drop the shadows, now again, we have to watch our proportions of orange to yellow. I'm actually going to mix this with a little bit of my orange brown. I like that color. And I want my shadows to be nice and solid. So bringing those down. So we, we upped our contrast there, but we also upped our orange. So we might need to uh, introduce a little more yellow. Remember, you always got to make sure your oranges, your shadows don't take over. And this is especially true when you're painting white, by the way, which we haven't done. Maybe we'll do, well, we're, we're painting the white dragon, but it's a little bit different because he's so big. And so I'm moving really fast with him. So maybe we'll need to paint something white that's on a smaller scale. So I can show you guys surface control with white. Um, but this is pretty good actually on surface control because you can see how it looks yellow, but then when I can see more orange, it starts to look more orange. We might need to glaze it a little bit or take some of our, our uh, lantern yellow or our candlelight and maybe, you know, knock it down a little bit, glaze it down a little bit, paint it over the top of that orange where it's not quite so uh, deep in the folds and uh, bring it up a little bit lighter. Maybe I need to take some of my yellow and go down the sides of these folds a little bit more. It can be a balancing act because you want your contrast, but you don't want to lose your yellow. So back and forth, we glaze it up a little bit. That's still pretty okay. Yeah, I think that's, that's okay. All right, so now we're going to add, we're going to take our previous highlight color, which was, uh, I think, candlelight with a uh, bit of pure white and clear yellow. And we're going to actually add more white, bring it up even lighter. You can also use lemon yellow if you want, if you're doing greenish yellows. Um, lemon yellow 9009 is a greenish yellow, a pale greenish yellow. There we go. Now you can see my pail. Yeah, no giveaways for this uh, for this stream, but yes, I babble. I totally batter you with information on this stream, and I repeat myself regularly because you know everybody's got to internalize stuff, and it takes longer to internalize unless you repeat. So if I do repeat things, it is merely to pummel them into your heads, which is the best possible reason to be repetitive. And now we're taking this and we're just putting it on the very top surfaces, wherever the light would be falling the most strongly to bring out those areas. But notice how that really, that pops up our highlights quite a bit. Now, I still feel like we are a little bit too orange and with going bold around my highlights, I feel like, well, maybe, maybe I could actually glaze this with a yellow to take it closer to yellow. I do feel like I've got a lot of orange here. I feel like if I cover up this part, it's still reading as yellow, but it is definitely an orangey yellow. So let's do something interesting. Let's glaze with clear yellow. Sure, I'm feeling gutsy. Why not? Even though it's a green yellow. But at the worst case scenario, because it's a green yellow, it's going to actually mute these oranges a bit, which I kind of want. So I'm like, all right. So a glaze is usually like two to one water to paint. It's very thin. It's just like colored water. Let's see if I can paint it on my fingernail for you guys so you can see. Yeah, see? It's like not there. That's a glaze. That's what you want. You want it to be just like a filter when you put it over the model. Indeedy. Pummeling. Pummeling my audience. I'm the only one who is permitted to be abusive of my audience. There you go. All right, going to use a big fat brush because, you know, glazing. With glazing, you want to put a filter over what you've already done to shift the color a little bit. In my case, I'm trying to shift it more toward yellow and away from orange. So I'm using clear yellow as a glaze. Um, I, you want to use a big brush. You want to cover the surface as fast as you can, and you want to wick off all excess. You do not want this to pool because it is so thin that we've broken the bonds of the paint, and it will dry in weird ways if we allow any of it to pool and dry. So grab your, your yellow and put a layer of it over the top of everything. And work fast, pull any excess off, let it sit. Notice how much yellow we got. 
as it dries, we'll be able to see the effect. Because remember, a, a thinned paint application always dries lighter than it looks at first. It looks darker wet. So we will be able to tell how much we shifted the color as it dries. But I can tell already that we've shifted it very much toward yellow. And this is a thing that the clears, all of the clears are good for. If you want to intensify, now it did intensify things. That is one thing that it did do because we used clear yellow. Um, if we wanted to mute it down, I probably would have actually used a purple. Uh, probably clear magenta. But that may have orangified it as well because magenta is a red. So it would, it is, it's a hard call to use a purple to mute yellow. Um, runic purple does an okay job of it. Actually, I did that on uh, ye old uh, seahorse, if you remember the hippocampus. There we go. So yeah, so we shifted everything a bit brighter yellow, but we kind of lost our orange a little bit. But we still have enough contrast for it to appear decent, in my opinion. Now I could re-highlight. Yeah, see? Yeah, it is. It did mute it out a little bit in a weird way, right? It muted the orange but it intensified my yellows. So now, if I want to take my yellows back down a little bit, I will grab more of my really pale yellow highlight because once you, when you glaze, you do take your highlights down a bit. So then I will re-add in my yellow highlight. See, it's paint magic. Paint magic. So yeah, this is why you would use yellows of contrasting color, like green versus orange, uh, together. In fact, that's one of the secrets of NMM Gold Highlight. NMM Gold Highlight has every single yellow pigment we make in it, which is why I like it. It's very versatile. It's a very versatile yellow, even if you're not using it for uh, NMM Gold. It does have some white in it, so you're going to mute out, uh, like if you try to make oranges with it, you'll get muted oranges, but I consider that a small price to pay. since most of the time I'm painting with muted colors anyway, just by the nature of what I mix. A little bit more highlight, a little bit more highlight, bring back all my little highlights from before I glazed. Um, I don't use, I haven't tried a lot of other brands transparent paints. Uh, Scientologist, some brands transparents are very much like, almost like a thick wash. Um, ours are actually colors and you can paint with them like normal paints. It's just they don't have any additional pigments in them to make them cover better. Uh, like our clear blue is only blue pigment in a clear base. It is still a paint. It is not like a glaze or things. And some other transparent paints are. Um, so I, I'm not sure. It depends but on the brand. They're all very different. Um, very different. But essentially uh, we're not like... Uh, some are, the transparency of our clears is dependent on the individual pigments and pigment grinds, just like artist pigments are. That's the best way to put it. Um, so like our clear yellow is going to cover less than our clear red, which is going to cover less than, you know, uh, one of our earthen clears that are coming for the Kickstarter awards in Bones 5. Um, it's going to be entirely based. Oh, and the phthalo green, the green clear uh, is quite uh, low coverage, quite transparent. Uh, the magenta is downright, you know, see-through. Except through an airbrush, apparently. Aaron Lovejoy said that through an airbrush, clear magenta has amazing coverage. <laughs> and I suspect that'd be true, actually, with most of the clears, because you're laying down, you're building it up really fast with an airbrush. So if you spray a clear through an airbrush and you want a transparent effect, you'd need to use very little or thin it more. Whereas if you're using it thicker and you're also spraying it on, it's building up layers fast enough that it probably is a lot better coverage than you would think. Um, so that's probably why, Aaron, if you ever watch this. I didn't think of that when we were talking about it in the actual stream where we did airbrush stuff, which was three weeks ago on Reaper uh, Toolbox Live. And if you didn't catch that show and you're interested in airbrush, go and catch that show. Oh, I'm chasing. I'm border collieing again. I need to grab those pictures from uh, Painting Dog. There, so all right. So yeah, so essentially bringing my highlights up and it's a light yellow. It's not, not even close to white. Um, I'm liking this okay, actually. It's not bad. It's a nice rich yellow. Looks really good from the side there. So I probably do need to cut down on my orange just a little bit, just judging from how it looks. I like how it looks from the side quite a bit. So if I want that everywhere, the difference between this view and that view 
is that here the orange is very small and contained, and here because the, the troughs are so wide, it's gotten a lot more out of hand. So to do that, I would probably go all the way back to, say, um, my candlelight yellow and start to slide down the sides of each of these troughs and minimize the orange a little bit. I don't know if I would glaze again because I like the effect except in these specific areas. So I might do a spot glaze actually. I might spot glaze just in there. Yeah, the hair is just base coated. I actually was, and I actually don't entirely like it. I, I started with Amadeus Red or Asmodeus Red and then I thought there wasn't enough contrast with the face. So I, uh, I went to orange because I thought that I, with dark skin, I thought I was going to need light, you know, pretty much light, dark, light, dark, light is the way you want to do your color compositions. You always want to have, this is why I tell people a lot that they don't have enough dark colors on their miniatures. Um, a lot more people will have light colors on their miniatures, but they tend to shy away from very dark colors. But having really dark colors on your models helps to offset all your details, helps to make them stand out. So keep, a, uh, keep an eyeball on that if you think that you are unhappy with your color compositions. Try alternating dark and light and see if you like them better. You don't have to go as dark as me either. You just need to go darker than a mid-tone. All right, I'm going to take um, my clear yellow and I'm going to glaze down just the folds, actually. Just the orange in the folds. Put a real light coat over it really quick. Wick off any excess with a damp brush. Make sure it does not pool. You do not want a glaze to pool. It is not a wash. And that actually looks better already. You know your glaze consistency is correct when you can put down one layer and see the effect, but it's not like, you know, you're not leaving brush strokes or anything. Yeah, that brought it up nicely. I like that a lot better. It's looking good. So yeah, yellow guys. And you can bring your yellow up to pure white if you want, but on cloth, I think I mentioned uh, yesterday, yeah, with the black cloth. Um, on cloth, I find it's unrealistic to bring your cloth up to white unless it's silk or satin or another shiny type of cloth, like cloth of gold. Um, then you can bring it up to white. White highlights always imply shininess. It's why it's okay to highlight skin up to white um, because skin has oils that cause our skin to be shiny. Uh, so you can get away with that. But on cloth, it's very rare unless you're trying to pull off a silk or satin effect for cloth to have a pure white highlight. So... Do keep that in mind. I am going to do one more glaze in that orange part there. My glazes are nice because I'm keeping some of the darkness, but I'm, I'm muting it down a little bit. I will, I will lose some dark eventually this way. Um, the other way I could run this, if I decide that I need more contrast, is I could reach for a darker color, like I could reach for ruddy leather, and see if I can make that work. It's a little more muted than the tarnished copper. The tarnished copper is quite vibrant. So, you know, kind of balance it with what you want. But if you want a really muted yellow, I would honestly use um, mostly Palomino with maybe just a drop of candlelight in it or a drop of lantern and then add ruddy leather to shade it. Let's try that. Let's see what color we get. I guess I'm almost to the end of my time. So I actually I am to the end of my time. We've been exactly an hour, but I'm going to see what this color looks like. Um, this is why I thought it might be two shows. I don't think it's going to be two shows, actually. I covered most of what I wanted to cover, what you guys had asked about. Um, this is the last part, the too bright. So let's see what kind of shadow that makes. With four drops of Palomino and one drop of Ruddy Leather, I get... Yeah, I get a, a kind of a nice muted brown. That would work just fine. Uh, especially if you drop, if you find that you want it just a little bit more yellow. Lantern Yellow is your miracle color, by the way. Um, I add it to my NMM even when I want to punch it up. My gold NMM, I should say. So if you find that that's not saturated enough, just add one little drop of lantern. And it'll probably shift it. Yeah, that's nice. So it'll make it richer. There we go. That's a great shadow for gold right there. That's lovely. And for yellow. So yeah, so if I was using yellow Palomino gold then, I might add... Um, one drop of that to my base color, my base Palomino, and then I would uh, add a drop of the ruddy leather. So that, that run out is maybe, I guess I could do that tomorrow. I could show you more muted, more muted yellow tomorrow. So that, that would be where I would be going, kind of there. Um, hey, what are our subs at, Justin? Are we at the Blacklight reactive paints. 
Um, Crawlfast, I have not been able to find a fluorescent pigment that is of any quality. Uh, so not on the board right now. Might be on the board at some point in the far flung future, but I do check every once in a while um, to see if there are fluorescent pigments available that, that we can get that aren't too expensive, that are good quality. But a lot of fluorescent pigments are just like kids, kids stuff. And they don't cover at all. Technically, I mean, those are, those are almost, uh, those are flakes technically anyway, and not, not pigments. Um, so, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, look at, uh, you're going to have to look at other lines until I can find something that works. Oh, um, Maharishi, I see your question now. Uh, craft smart, yeah, basic that are fine for terrain, but suck for mini. Yeah, it's true, Maharishi, because when you're dealing with, um, okay, so when you're painting, when you're painting miniatures, you want a high quality base because if you're going to get any good as, a, to be any good as a painter, you want something that, that will thin well, right? Uh, last time I checked, I was dealing with Apple Barrel and some other brand. They don't thin nearly as well as a high quality, um, artist paint or, or a, uh, hobby paint. Um, the other thing you're dealing with is pigment count. Usually those paints are really cheap because they have a cheap base and they also aren't putting much pigment in. If they're putting a lot of pigment into their paint, then they would be a lot more expensive. Trust me, I know what good quality pigments cost. So you're dealing with a couple of issues then with craft paint. You absolutely can get good paint jobs with craft paint. You're just handicapping yourself. Um, I've seen people get good, good paint jobs with craft paint, but they have to work harder at it because the paint doesn't naturally want to do the things that they're trying to make it do. So it depends on your level too. I mean, if you're um, like if you're a basic painter, uh, just starting to head into intermediate territory, you probably can get pretty good uh, results with some of the craft paints. But I would upgrade even to like Liquitex, um, liquid uh, fluid paints, fluid acrylics before I would uh, go to craft paints. I just it's uh, when you're dealing with mini painting, you want to choose materials that will give you the least level of frustration. You want to choose stuff that's going to work with you, going to work with you right the first time. And that isn't going to make you go, gosh darn, why isn't this working? I'm doing it just like the guy in this video did it. So your quality of your paint and, the, and having paint more the point that works the way you need it to work, which might take some experimentation on your part. Um, and also having good brushes that will actually hold a tip and stuff like that, not the super cheapo ones. Um, although with uh, Master's Touch from Hobby Lobby, um, they, they do some nice uh, pseudo sables that are decent and not expensive. Uh, okay. So yeah, my best uh, advice, Maharishi, to see the difference is just to buy a bottle of one of our paints, uh, maybe one of, you know, of another brand that you like, that you think you might like to try. Um, there are a number of, of paint brands out there. And then just play with it. Like buy similar colors from, you know, a couple different lines and that you already have a craft paint that's kind of like. And then kind of experiment, like paint them onto things, see what the texture is, see what the finish is, uh, thin them with a little water, try to make a wash out of them, you know, see how they react, things like that. Uh, Reaper John said you mm. sent Justin a muted yellow. Yes. So he sent me a couple of pictures of some community uh, painted yellow. Oh, okay. So I can drop them on screen. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, give us your quick thoughts on you them. You betcha. Um, I'm just going to choose two of these. Sure. Choose the best two. Probably. Uh, that's, oh, yeah. That's a greenish yellow right there. there. And then uh, this one's the other bright one. Okay. That's a really bright one. Yeah. It works because he's got the bright teal and bright pink too. Magenta. So, yeah. definitely. So, the muted yellow in the one on the bottom or the one on the left in this case, um, it definitely has a more, it's more like this color for the shadows, uh, the one I, I did last. Um so it's more of a brown mixed with yellow and far less orangey. And the highlights are a lot less orangey as well. So that's a different, you can get so many different yellows and you want to choose depending on the other colors in your piece. Uh, so there, they're working on their NMM and it's got a muted blue or maybe even a muted teal. It's hard to tell. Um, and so since they're muting their blue, they needed to also mute their yellow. And that's why the yellow is more brown. Uh, it's not as bright. They're, when they are using bright yellow to highlight, notice they're using it pretty sparingly, except at the top of the hood. Um, so yeah, things like that. That's all into color theory and choosing colors for your paints, though. And I could go on like five hours with that, so we don't want to do that. 
Justin really doesn't want me to do that. <laughs> uh, we have another show in that period oh, of time. Oh, yeah, yeah. No problem. I like to be perfect, John. Even if I never tell you what I'm going to paint before I paint it. <laughs> um, and set of paints. Actually, the Forster's Favorites is close that I did for the Reaper uh, Bones 5. However, um, that set, I was, pr I was particularly trying to avoid colors that we had otherwise promoted. So, I mean, if I were to put together an Anne paint set at this point, I don't know, I probably could put together, like, I could probably put together a 54-color set, actually, of colors that Anne uses. Maybe, maybe even, maybe even smaller, but I could, I could probably put together 28. I don't know. How much fits in the pistol cases these days? It's like, I think it's like 26 or 28. Core 20 or so. Ah, oh, but the problem is planar. Okay, and I just I just wrestled with this because I just resorted my paint collection at home, so that everything I don't use normally is in baggies by by hue, and then I just have a two tiered paint spinner on my desk, and it carry and it has all the paints in it that I normally like. But if I tried to make that paint spinner go from sixty down to twenty, it does drop out some key stuff that I really like and I use a lot. I just don't use it all the time, so it's difficult. It's very difficult. <laughs> Everybody says, and do, do the and set. Well, here you go. It'll have all the liners and all the clear brights. <laughs> For sure it will. Um, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could do I could do a set. I could do a set, I guess. I'm going to talk to Ed about that. I don't know. All right, Miss Ann. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing the... I know, I've got all this energy today. this morning, right? It's the third day on the new diet, and I'm like, I could just go for another hour. Let's go for another hour, Justin. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but tune in today, guys, at 3 o'clock central for who, Terrain Tuesday. Terrain Tuesday, that's right. It's Ed's show. Right. What is he painting now that his tra uh, tree bucket is done? It's it's basically done, I think. I would say he's either moving on to Terrain or there's something else he has in his own mind. Oh, so yes. Because he's, he's like me. That. He never tells John what he's going to do. Right. And, and that, that really gives know. me freedom to, to frustrate John. <laughs> John is like sitting there like growling and ripping out his hair in his office. So I expect anytime he walks through that door, he could be doing anything. It's Ed. Expect anything. Correct. Uh, you know, I don't know if they make them anymore in Groning. Um, I, I experimented with so many different paint systems these last two years when I was in my new house and uh, trying to find the right one. And I just ended up going back to my paint spinner because it's vertical. Because it's like a spice rack, right? You could probably use a round spice rack that spins. Um, and uh, I just, it's the best thing. It takes up the right amount of space and still offers me like the ability to have like 60 paints on my desk. Um, so yeah. Oh yay, gift sub to Maharishi. Yay. Well, welcome Maharishi. I hope we see you around a lot. Tell us about your experiments with getting away from craft paint or going back to craft paint. You know, we're not going to be prejudiced against you if you use different paint than I do. Also, I, uh, I have a raid set up here for someone who does not see it coming. Oh, so, really? Oh, yeah, so this is going to be a fun one, huh? She should be fun. She's painting some minis. Um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll she, see. She doesn't seem to have been doing it for very long. Okay, so, so she might be a new painter. She might be a new... Well, no, not painting. I mean streaming. Oh, uh, streaming. I don't know about painting. Long. Okay, but, okay. Um, so, she seems to be kind of a, a smaller Twitch channel, so this will be fun, guys. Make sure to spread the Reaper love. Yep, we'll talk about my diet some other time, Twisted Noma. Maybe I'll post on the Patreon, or maybe keep, I'll uh, maybe we'll talk about it another time. Keep being awesome. <laughs> and uh, We'll stay you know, on topic. <laughs> yes. For once. <laughs> and uh, if she doesn't know about Reaper Minis, why don't you guys go Oh, yeah, and, uh, you should totally spread the Reaper love because this new streamer, painter, new streamer. Yeah. Ask her what she paints. Ask her if she paints Reaper. Yeah, ask if, her she, what if she's she a new painter, point her towards the RTB Pro Tips uh, video line. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. And Mr. Right, Sexy guys. Voice. I don't know about all that. <laughs> But thank you guys uh, for coming out. Uh, go and spam her, guys. She probably last... has never seen a raid this big. Correct. Have, I hope. I see every last one of you uh, this afternoon. Yeah, at 3 come back PM. for Ed's show. Always entertaining. Ask him for old Reaper stories. If not tomorrow at 11 a.m. for Ed's show. Yes, I will be back tomorrow and doing something. Maybe we'll do muted yellow. That'd be fun. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Yellow All right, guys. Yellow. Yay, 100 viewers. Hit her. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Bye.